Got it. All right. Hey, pushing. everyone. <laughs> it's Lady Amy and Lady Nancy, and it's time for Tea Across the Miles, the morning edition. <laughs> That's exactly right. You're right. We always do afternoon. Well, this is my morning cuppa because I was running errands this morning. So good morning to you. Good morning. You and I was at b &I this morning, so that's why yeah. I'm like all up. And this was the first morning that I have ever had Piper on a b &I Eve, which meant I had to get her to Lake Mary, which for those of you not around here, it's like 20 minutes or whatever, the opposite direction of where I need to go. <laughs> and they don't open till 6.30. And I'm supposed to be at my meeting place as before seven as I can like so usually 650 or something right and so I was like sweet so I guess we have to like get in the car at like six and like assume that she doesn't take a lot of time like once they're there <laughs> like you know? right right so, and I woke up at like 4 10 or whatever so that I could do uh like preparation and do a couple things and then guess who also decided to wake up at 4 10 <laughs> Piper. No. Yeah. Now, luckily, she only wanted to watch TV, but she wanted me to stay and snuggle. And I was like, I can bring my work into the bed, I guess. Like, I so then she's like talking with me, and I'm like, You're supposed to be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to hurry up and do this so I can get in the shower. All of this, you're supposed to be asleep. <laughs> well, hopefully, early to bed tonight is all I can say. She would, yeah. I've I bet because yeah because she was up like the whole two hours basically before we left and then uh she slept in the car which was like the plan and like so brought her there and and they like have her stay in the front uh where they've got like chairs and stuff until all the teachers come and so they've got like comfy chairs and pillows so she curled up with her blanket <laughs> it's like right okay have a good day <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> and I actually made now. She yeah, might get cranky and, later. She might get cranky later. I don't right? know. <laughs> and then she actually, yeah. And uh, I actually made it to my meeting, like uh, pretty much on time is what I usually do. So like 10 till seven or something. So we were on top of things this morning. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, we had to rise a little bit early ourselves. Jackie has her um, twice annual blood work and I had oh. to get her over to the lab to get that taken. She, she's usually oh, quite brave to... about it, but she was not brave this morning. She was, oh. I mean, you, you just see the shaking and, you know, and the crying and the snot. That's really she crying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. And uh, in the past, she's been really good about it and, you know, how, telling everybody how brave she was, but she could not claim that today. Oh. Um, she was, she was really just, poor thing. I felt so bad for Oh, but, uh, I usually buy her a cupcake afterwards, but um, right. we did this so early in the morning, and I'm like, no, you get to pick out a Lunchables for lunch. And oh. we have to <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Uh, like, but you can have Pringles for a snack, which we never do. So I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Pringles. I gave her something. Oh, for my gosh. Lunch. Anyway, so. Oh, so does she have to fast for it? Is no, thank goodness. No, no. In fact, oh, okay. I, need, I just need to make sure that the that I got her her daily medication. Um, as you know, the thyroid, so it can change. And as mm -hmm. she's getting older and her hormones are changing, yeah. that alters the levels of her thyroid readings. So the last time we did this, she, you know, the doctor said, well, this one doesn't look good. So let's try this dose and come back in six weeks with another blood. So it was like three times every six weeks, instead yeah. of just 12 hours having to get her tested. It's so hard to have to put yeah. my child through. She does not yeah. understand why she has to do that. So, um, yeah. So I'm praying mm, that they've kind of leveled off right now anyway. I know they'll change throughout her life, but it is what it is. Got you. So, yeah. Well, let's turn to tea. What do you want to hit first? Because there's so many things. I, I know. I was like, know. okay, so what? Okay. Well, first things first, let's just, well, because we can jump around. So we have to discuss, uh, so I've been talking about on Tea Time a lot that, uh, with Trevor, um, that I am Trevor. <laughs> I know, basically, yeah, it's just, it's you, yeah, we call it, I feel like it's the Trevor and Amy show. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we have a guest. <laughs> right, exactly. 
Uh, but so, uh, oh, but now that it's at four o'clock, we thought there's a chance that you can make it, but also I was like, four o'clock's also like when everything starts happening after school. <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 am not off of work until four fifteen actually. Oh, like okay. Gotcha. But if I can poke my nose in, yeah, then yeah. I will do so. Okay. Yeah. But, um, so we've been talking to Trevor about Prince Harry's book that I have, uh, on audio and I still have. There we go. The spare. <laughs> Not the spare, just spare. <laughs> uh, he's so I have two hours left on it. And I I think and I've like it's been like over a week or something since I've listened to it. And I was telling my coworker, I'm like, I feel like there's probably just like a weird part of me like doesn't want it to quite be over yet. <laughs> I was like, I guess I could listen to it again. <laughs> you feel like you're sitting in his living room and having a little chat chat with him. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like me with my podcast, except for he's not going to do a new one next week. <laughs> right. Now, does he actually narrate his own book? Yeah, he narrates wow, the whole that's, thing. That's, that's, that's why I that's was- That's a like, lot of talking and fine print, I'm just going to say. Yeah. Wow. It is. So that's why I'm like, I, I think that the audiobook is better than the real book sure. because you get to hear him say right. his story yeah with his own affectations and emotions and things like that I would agree that's yeah yeah cool. so it's it's fun uh I believe it was like 1999 from Apple Books because I don't sign up for Audible because uh -huh. I avoid subscription services but anyway <laughs> that's my own deal <laughs> very good uh but so Prince Harry the book is great. I was trying to tell you that I think, let's see. So I think it's like 15 hours total, 15 and a half hours total. And the first 10 hours is all before Megan was ever in the picture. Like maybe even a little bit more. The very beginning starts with an opening of like, sort of, it's like Megan related. And then it's like, now let's jump all the way back and start from the beginning. Interesting, because the book, so I did crack it yesterday. Yeah. And it starts immediately just with um, basically like the day that he found out his mom died. Oh. Yeah, unless I- Not I remember. Oh, you know what? oh, I guess there's a forward. Maybe I missed that. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's the forward. Yeah, maybe that's the forward. Um, and I didn't, I didn't read that part yet. I, I'll go back and read that today. But he, you know, that first chapter starts right off, you know, with- Okay, okay. You know, so August that was... 29th, 1997. Right. So, so yeah. that's, yeah. So the, the title of the book, Spare, is interesting because it, uh, like, what's funny is that, like, we all know, well, we most of us <laughs> know the term the air and the spare yes. <laughs> we the brits and the anglophiles know <laughs> right and, and but what's funny is like it never occurred to me that like they were aware of that phrase for some reason i thought it's like oh we all know they're the air and the spare oh it's just a little titter behind their backs and stuff. yeah, yeah that. but yeah. it's like oh no he's like well aware and he yeah like you know talked about how like, growing up like it was well, he can, like, William and Charles can't fly on a plane together because they're both heirs, but Harry can ride with his dad because, like, who cares if that plane goes down? There, like, you know, there's got to be that sense, I mean, without it being said outright, but, but yet- That's what he said. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's not like it was ever said outright, but it was very obvious. Now, Trevor, who is pretty much devil's advocate to, like, everything. <laughs> they say yeah, like, yes. So he was like, or you could take that as, well, haha, ha, I get a ride with dad and you don't get to like, well, yeah, I'm sure it, there has, that's the element of this typical sibling rivalry and right. it's, just, it's a different twist because of who they are and what their positions are. Right, right. Yeah. And I was like, and it doesn't mean that there wasn't any of that, but it seems like the longer lasting effect was I'm a spare. <laughs> so well and he writes that I'm special <laughs> yeah it's true but he's you know and he writes and I, I did see this in an interview and 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 rightly so like you said you know I, I thought maybe I'd gotten all that I need to know from all the interviews that all the big points were taken but he said it's, it's much more interesting than that and a lot that isn't covered mm -hmm. so um but uh he says that um I was it I was 20 the first time I heard the story of what Pa allegedly said to mummy the day of my birth Wonderful. Now you've given me an heir and a spare. My work is done. A joke. 
presumably. Right. Isn't that so, right? Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. And that's funny. I'm glad you brought that up because like by now I've like forgotten a lot of the shocking things in the beginning. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So. You know, it, it, we, but, we can sit here and finger wag. Right. And Charles should have been more sympathetic when the mom died and did it, but they're people process things differently. You've got yeah. to take this into account, you know, it, it, being, how to say this, being charitable of spirit. Yeah. Um, you know, he wasn't unfeeling. He was no. raised differently. Right. He was, you know, possibly guarding his, he, maybe he even thought, I'm just going to be real charitable. Maybe he even thought if I don't break down, my boys won't break down. Oh, right. Yeah, you yeah. know, there's a sort of protection there, but, um, it's really easy to look on the outside and say, I can't believe he did this and he should have done that. You know, people respond differently. I told you I had a brother who died and um, my dad has never cried and he feels terrible about that, but he just was not able to do it. I want right. to say my sister Donna couldn't either. Oh my that's gosh. How some people respond. So, so that's going to be a running, uh, I don't know, like through line for a lot of the book is that he can't cry. He hasn't been yes. able to cry. Yeah. Right. I, I I picked that up already early on. In the right. First right. So days. that's so that'll be interesting, I guess, for you to read whenever it does happen <laughs> to see how what you think of it. You know, like your own experience, but and your family's experience. But right. the um yeah, I like finger wagging. I well, so with Harry, I like the tone of it for the most part is not placing blame or like <clears throat> saying anybody did anything wrong it was just sort of like this is what happened and like it wasn't super but it's not like he's telling you dad you should have done that. you know like yeah it's like yeah. he totally understands that his dad like can't say much and so his dad like basically remembers like sitting on the edge of the bed and telling him his mom died and like just sort of like putting his hand on his knee and say like, I'm sorry, darling boy. Mm -hmm. And like, that was as much touch as he could. Yes, that's all he got. Yeah. Yeah. And some families are not touchy feely. And I think they were all raised to be that way too. So that goes against them as well. But yeah, there's. Right. there's... My family is not touchy feely at all. Like yeah. our, my sister-in-law, Candace, my brother's wife is like, uh, <laughs> has evolved us a little bit. <laughs> Well, if we ever do meet, just stand by because I'm a hugger. Okay, that's good. I like hugs. <laughs> I just, I was like, with a special name is Olaf, and I like warm hugs. <laughs> okay, I love, I do get that now since I've had to watch those things. <laughs> I just have to interject real quick and say that we'll be down there this weekend, Saturday through Wednesday. Um, but oh, I'm what? barely, I'm not even sure I'm going to see either one of my sisters because we are just, it, it's such, trial and effort to get down there and we so seldom get to go to disney world and it's just up with jack oh, okay it's the disney trip yeah 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 um so we're going to be doing the parks for three days and then back on a plane to come home um right. so jose said are you he did he said are you gonna see amy and i'm like yeah. how is that i'm like i can't even get to see my sisters he goes well maybe and i'm like jose i can't even get to see my sisters i said so right, right. you know he goes you ever gonna meet amy i'm like i don't know yeah <laughs> yeah i was gonna say like the if you guys were ever going to do something at like Disney Springs or whatever, like Piper and I could meet you out there. But if you, yeah, but I know you've got your days packed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. From, from start to, you know, to finish. Right. So unfortunately, so I'm sorry. So back to, That's okay. back to the Royals. Um, yeah, yeah. But so, um, yeah. So I feel like, I don't know. He, I'm trying to think how to say this. So obviously diana's great and everything right <laughs> so like an understatement of the century right. <laughs> <laughs> oh there but, we go right okay so when uh hopefully she doesn't mind me saying this so my aunt okay so my aunt and uh uncle so when they got married uh it, my aunt was going to be his second wife uh, because his first wife uh, had died. Okay. And I heard the story that I guess my grandpa talked to my aunt beforehand was like, you realize that like, no matter what all the stuff happened, like in the real world, they will be remembered basically like 
only for good things like they kind of turn into a saint or whatever yes yes and Mm -hmm. so it was like just know that going into it (laughs) right like that this this might be some stuff to deal with or whatever and so I thought that was interesting because it's like yeah Diana was like not perfect of course but of course and then in Harry's eyes right like all he sees is that basically that she's a victim of everything and like the mm-hmm. media and mm-hmm. everything and so I think a lot of it is you know if if you if it would have been fortunate enough for her to live throughout his lifetime they have all kinds of issues I'm sure right like normal mother-son stuff and uh, they probably would yeah and yeah. um but yeah, right yeah. but now but since that couldn't be she's just like immortalized as like this perfect being that was a victim well and we we tend to do that don't we with you know with our dearly departed um right you know, i could go on down the street of um you know like john f kennedy you know mm-hmm. it, his presidency was not a perfect one but you wouldn't know right. that now right you know right. so um but we don't speak ill of the dead so that's that, that's just right. what we do and don't do so yeah mm-hmm. so with diana um I guess I am finding it interesting, uh, or I found it interesting, just how bad the media was, especially with, um, oh, like Harry and stuff. So, like, because I, I guess you've not gotten very far, but like when he goes through like teenage years and just a whole bunch of stuff, they always claimed like, oh, he's just trying to get into the news or whatever. And he's like, I'm really trying not to, like, I don't, (laughs) like he had like these two guys that like paparazzi that like basically were just constantly following him. Like Mm -hmm. when he thought that, like when he was basically evading everybody else, somehow they knew where he was. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, and they'd get in his face and try to say a whole bunch of stuff so that he would react. And then they get, you know, and it's just like, so yeah and for the people who claim that well and I mean he's talked about it too but how it's just like well every everybody sees it as like we are you know with the royal family we're paid for by tax dollars therefore you own us you own and, exactly and you have a right to any pictures you want you have a right to any information that you want like you mm-hmm. get to do whatever you want because you own us right and we're not real humans we don't have real <laughs> feelings yeah I, I I heard that in an interview and um I think it was the one with Stephen Colbert that you sent me and mm-hmm. uh, yeah that it, yeah the media are just right and on so many levels I mean they're not even going to go into you know how they you know sway po- uh political view and things like oh, that right. just so untruthful and um but and I knew it was already out there but I have to say even you know reading his book and watching the you know watching the documentary and stuff yeah. like that just really oh, yeah. like you just can't really trust what's out there there's two sides to everything you know mm-hmm. what, what are you and I've said this before there are three sides of truth his oh, right. A, a a person side truth b person and the actual truth and, and then what actually happened yes. uh-huh. <laughs> right. uh-huh. mm-hmm. and yeah you're right and like with um harry so what what i'll be interested because your husband's in, it's the air force right navy sorry navy i want to say just past the 30 year mark Ooh. five days ago 30 years yes for him yeah very nice <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, so it'll be interesting. I want to hear what you think when you get to the all the chapters about him one really wanting to be in the military and like wanting to be in the war, and then uh, so I want. But then two, once he's actually there, I mean, he shares like detailed accounts and like what all is happening, what he's doing, like all the stuff, and so um yeah so like for me I basically it's like well I've never heard anybody like I'm not experiencing anything close to that and I like it's just like a whole new world for me to hear about like I guess a soldier and what they were just doing over there and like the the tiny details right it wasn't just like an overview and so um, I'll be interested in reading that um yeah because he like really really is like yeah 
heavily like identifies with yeah the military like that's his well the, the thing that um, i and what i haven't read yet and what i'm interested in hearing too is apparently though he he does call out the number of um enemy that he took down and that's saying it politely that's the euphemism for you know he killing. i think he calls it number of is it just kills i feel like he's called it number of kills or something so i would imagine among yes. his comrades there's mm -hmm. conversation. I don't know if there's a lot of hoot hooting about it. Um, but I will say that was not a smart move for a man who's constantly talking about protecting his wife and children because yeah. the enemy will, can seek vengeance. And mm -hmm. um, I will tell you, so we have, there was, we, we were living about 12 houses away from the former secretary of defense. He lived in our neighborhood. Yeah. He served, um, was he picked, he was picked by Obama, served under Trump. He wrote a book, um, stuff like that. So he lived right up the street here and he had personal security detail until he moved away. And he, long after he was out of the job, mm -hmm. he was paying private security mm -hmm. to guard. I mean, there were black trucks in front of his house, wow. behind his house, uh, down the street, and because the enemy could possibly still, you're like, right. hey, we know what he, what orders he put out. Right, right. So they could still target him. So here you have somebody high profile like this. Right. And I'm really surprised that he would, you know, go out there. I know he wants to talk about his time in the military. I know he wants to show, hey, I'm a regular guy. I'm not, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sitting around waiting to be served with, you know, silver servers and, and, and stuff. And I did the job and I'm, I'm a tough guy. I get that. But for somebody, like I said, who wants to protect his wife and children, I don't right. think it was a smart move, but I, that's just true. So I had, I hadn't thought of it that way. I heard like, I mean, his explanation on like the interview and stuff with Colbert or whatever is that, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a secret, like shame kind of thing that like weighs heavily on every, but whether it's shame or not, but it's like the secret heavy thing that you carry with you. And so his whole thing is like, let's just say it out loud. Like, let's talk about it. And he's hoping to reduce like veteran suicide is the kind of the idea of like, we can talk about these like, un like these taboo topics or whatever. So I understand that point of it. Yeah, but then you're right. So what, what's interesting is so at one point in the book, he'll talk about how he is, has such a soldier mentality, meaning that like when he would be upset that he didn't get permission to strike or whatever, because he always had a permission from someone higher up. He's like, but I was a soldier and I'm not up there thinking about like geopolitical stuff and like, right. you know, and so it's like up, you know, up there, they're talking about, well, we're worried because ev for every one Taliban member you kill, three more will rise up because of that death. That's my gray hair, you know, you pull one and <laughs> right. So, so what's funny is that what your or what your point made me think of is that he's still thinking like a soldier mm -hmm. and not thinking like, hold on, how else does this play out? Yes. Right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, and I understand his wanting to go, hey, you know, I, I want to be that. I know he misses that side of his life. You know, he, that was such a calling for him and right. such a purpose for him. And he had that camaraderie and that family. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand where he's, you know, being uh, philanthropic as he is, that he wants to be able to reach out and um, and the whole mental well-being. Right. All that good stuff. Yeah. but. Um, yeah, I, I just. But you're right. I'm not like saying this, he did the wrong thing. I'm just saying that there, are, there are safety risks when you. There are added added risks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so that's true. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Um, Can I? I'd like to bring up. So again, I barely got into this. I'm not even halfway through. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. So, so let's talk about how this rubs the royal family the wrong way. Okay, so. <laughs> the part where and again this is so minor let alone everything else so again oh gosh what was that I sent you a text and I was like this is just my opinion but let me go back again and talk about yeah. the mystique of the royal family right that the thicker the veil 
as has always been, the more they are up in their castle and you can't see them, um, it's this, um, this air of um, divinity. Right. Of, right. And not celebrity, because they're not no. supposed to be celebrity. This is, it's, it's supposed to be this divinity, you know, like when the coronation comes, they're supposed to come in front of the king, do the blessing stuff, because like, nobody's supposed to be able to see that. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> so because of they have let's it can't be argued they have become equals to celebrity they, i mean that is how the, the, right. the media and the world treats them now mm -hmm. um and i think some of that is being embraced by kate and will but aside from that mm -hmm. so the more you take the veil down the less you're seen as something special right the more you're seen as he's a regular bloke like me the it's more like, the feeling and the opinion gets to grow of why are we paying you how much to live where, right, where it's like it's not fair you? like if yeah yeah yes. it's like I could like that could yeah. be me why is yeah. it me <laughs> so I just kind of chuckled when Harry describes how his dad does these upside down exercises every morning in his bedroom mm -hmm. in his boxer shorts and I would just imagine I think if Queen Elizabeth had read that Mm -hmm. I think she would have fallen over. You just put out the, you know, made everybody. Right. Yeah, it's like there's some so, things when, that are like just nor normal, as in like a normal family's like cute little funny side side notes about what your family was like growing up. Yeah, or your but, dad walking around in his boxer shorts. Nobody, but maybe Charles doesn't want like everybody to know that. Like, yes, yes, because it takes the veil down because it's it it. I'm sorry, when you picture the king in his boxer shorts, it does strip him a bit of his okay. dignity. Well, okay. and like doing weird, like upside down exercises or whatever. <laughs> that too. That too. Um, so I think that's where this goes against tradition, if you want to say, if you want to put it as lightly as that, is his book right. goes against tradition. Um, so that's true. I think I, so. Since I do have, sorry, since I do still have two hours left of it, and and it is like starting to get into like the thick of Megan and I mean they've like all that stuff but so far I have not heard anything that has been super damning about William and Charles and their behavior in this now it doesn't mean that he's saying all like it's not all puppies and sunshine no but a lot of it is just sort of like this is how they reacted or like William and I never see eye to eye like you know like there are things leading up to this that it's just sort of like mirrored or like you know amplified once Megan comes into the picture so he's exposing them he's airing dirty laundry and he's going against the never complain never explain he's oh yeah explaining and he's explaining full yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so Yes. So I think what I will say is that I feel like once this, I mean, like this book is out, right? The docuseries is out. Great. I hope that now this means they can turn a page in their next chapter and be like, okay, we got to say what we wanted to say. Now let's stop harping on this. <laughs> like it's been two yes. years. Yes. Like going on three. So while I understand on their end why it's important that they do this uh, as a, I don't know, consumer of their stuff, it's like, okay, but like, I'm gonna get tired of it. So <laughs> like, let this be the end of it and then give us something new. <laughs> like, do right. Yes, precisely, precisely. Yeah. And, and, I, and Megan has laid low through this and I think that's a really good idea. Yes. Um, you know, she's letting him be out there and put his story out there um and not be quite as associated with it um right. which I think is a good idea um, yeah I think so too yeah, yeah for sure so that that makes sense but what is it that you're hearing about William and the mistress oh my again gosh. yeah it's stupid stuff it's like it was a head a couple of headlines it was like see what see what amazing if something to the effect of see what amazing gift uh William got his mistress um, William didn't spend Valentine's Day with Kate, but with his mistress. And it's all this stuff with his mistress, mistress, mistress. And I, I just, 
So yeah. it's funny because I was having tea across the street with my um, neighbor mm -hmm. and we were talking about it. And um, and I was saying, <clears throat> I said, these are all my opinions. What do I know? You and I are speculators. We are just, you know, right. sitting on the sidelines, reading what we can and um, voyeuristically. <laughs> right, right, right. Mm -hmm. but with much respect. Much right. respect. <laughs> um, and, a, and a tinge of jealousy. Um, so... Okay, so I don't think, it's hard for me to imagine that William would ever cheat on Kate. And I'm not saying because she's a perfect person, although the media would have you believe she, you know, could do no wrong. And I'm a big fan, you know that, but mostly yeah. the world of. Um, but after what he witnessed his mother going through, mm -hmm. um, after, I mean, everybody knows, though, that that was a chosen marriage. It wasn't a marriage of love, not on Charles' mm -hmm. part, not on Charles' part. Mm -hmm. I think she was fascinated and, um, you know, uh, idolized Charles to a certain extent. I mean, what girl yeah. doesn't go, I'm going to be the queen. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I just really have a hard time believing that Will would put his own family through that. They do seem like a good family, but again, mm -hmm. we, are, we are told what the media wants us to believe, which is nothing but good and positive stories. Um, I don't know if you saw the pictures of them at the BAFTA Awards. Mm -hmm. They went to the BAFTA Awards. And um, I just have to say for somebody, I do love Kate's wardrobe. I didn't mm -hmm. care for her. She wore this beautiful white dress, very reminiscent of Grace Kelly, but she wore black gloves. And I didn't care for that look. I thought it was, you know, I love black and white together, but I didn't. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but aside from that, the, 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 the fanny pat, well, they wouldn't say fanny. They would say the butt pat. You right, know, right, yeah, 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 bag you know, seen around the world as they were walking in together, very happy, lovingly looking at each other. And as they walk in and she, you know, kind of puts her hand down and she very lightly taps his bum. Oh my gosh. And, um, and I can't help but go back to a time. I, I, I don't know if she is so well-trained at this point that she would be able to hide her feelings if she knew that he had some mistress. I don't think she'd put up with it quite honestly, but I, you know, what do I know? I don't know her personally. I just remember when they were in France, one of their first engagements after they got married, and there's a video, and you can still find video and, and still pictures. They're coming out of a building down these steps, and Will definitely has a look of contemplation on his face, if you want to call it that way, and Kate yeah. is visibly pissed off. <laughs> visibly. I mean, she has a look like this. You know, like she's pursing mm -hmm. her lips and you can just tell that something, and, and you see this video, they are not walking together. You can see that they're mad. So, you know, and every, everybody fights, you know, every right. every couple, whatever. So I just really, I, I just think it's a bunch of BS. I can't help but wonder if it isn't the media that fights for Harry and Meghan. Right. I'm not saying by Harry and Meghan, but for, you know, that they're trying to put right. some vitriol and animosity here and make everybody, you know, right. But that's just my opinion. But they're horrible. Well, if the next time I come across one of those headlines, I'm going yeah. to send it to you because, yeah, I've seen them at least three times now. It's like, give me a break. Right. Well, just what's me. interesting is, so you say, yeah, like it could be, especially like back when they were in the palaces and they all had their own royal press offices. Right. There are some things like, like it also could be Charles and Camilla's office that are actually putting these things out too. Like, like Harry will talk about some of the things that their office did to like the boys or whatever. And it's just like, these are your kids, like, come on, you know? You approve that. But it, it helps, yeah. Well, and it's also like, I don't know how much they immediately sign off on, but they definitely know that they're not gonna get in trouble if they, throw out a story to be like look over here so that you're not looking at whatever's happening with Charles and Camilla like yes 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 understood and I remember Harry talking about that in an interview that when he and Wills were growing up that they knew that this they they learned right. that this is what mm -hmm. the kind of thing and they right. they they promised each other they were not going to do this right um, I really hope that Will is a bigger person and not doing this how much he can control I don't know but um, I think there's a lot more, like I said, you know, if, if the media were not the media that works for the monarchy, those that right. are pro-monarchy, pro-Charles, uh, pro pro-William, right. if they're going to go down that road of, you know, they just want, 
they were already putting positive stories out there. I feel like it's really gone overboard, especially with Kate. Right. Um, you know, that Kate's the perfect mother and Kate's, you know, they wouldn't necessarily say perfect, but Kate does this with her kids and Kate does, you know, and then you go over and you, right. you do find some stories, you know, that are positive that are in the, you know, um, that are on the Harry Megan team, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it, you see all these other things. It, it's just, it's so awful. They're just and so, it, awful. And, and it makes me pull back from reading some of the, I have to say, because I'm like, I realize just now how much this is just horrible hearsay and gossip and planted and not true and I'm like and, you know, and sometimes like completely like fabricated like mm -hmm. doesn't even yeah like just completely made up but the yeah so so uh like speaking of those types of articles and stuff so Harry now has to try to keep himself like it became sort of an addiction for him like obviously a very negative one. I mean, not that addictions are ever great, but like it was super right. negative because it's like he hates the media and what they're doing and all these things they're saying, but he's one of the ones clicking and reading yes. all the stuff. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so he has to try and like not click it either. <laughs> yeah, and, and so what did he say? Do you remember the two word, the two word phrase that he said that he's on a wow. digital oh. diet? Oh, right. Digital I diet. love that. I yeah, yeah, yeah. love that phrase. I forgot that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> I, it's, we're in the middle where we just started Lent here and especially in this household. And that was one of the things that I suggested for my 18 year old son. I said, you should go on a digital diet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give up some sweets during Lent and I'm asking you to give up some of that screen time. Right, right. Um, it, it's a great phrase. I, he's, yeah. I really would love to know how and, and let's face it these guys are educated they're very well educated you throw in a british accent and you think you know these people are the smartest people in the world um truly but it's well written i love when people don't use uh, I'm, I'm a i'm a word person i always tell my classes this don't put me with numbers don't ask me to teach math but yeah. i can teach you how to diagram a sentence i can teach you how to write yeah. things like that so when i see people using not very common ways of describing things. And that's how this, I keep wondering, did Harry sit down and write this verbatim word for word? I'm sure he had secretaries, somebody that was writing, but I, I, I love his turn of phrases and, and things like that. And mm -hmm. um, very intelligent. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice read. It's an easy read. Right. And, well, yeah. and it's funny you mention that about being so well-educated because then we, one of the things he goes into is like how he didn't, apply himself at school and stuff but so oh, okay, maybe so, my son maybe he can be a prince here you go. <laughs> <laughs> sorry will it my will be, i love it i love it <laughs> be, a, be a rogue prince <laughs> and so um but so being so yes i'm an anglophile right but like being still over here in america and only our american media for my lifetime there are certain uh things that i did not know that were like uh like attributed or whatever to them so i didn't know that basically in the british media harry has forever been the dumb one i did not know this i had never heard like honestly that show the windsors that i think is hilarious on netflix mm -hmm that Harry always play like the guy who plays Harry is always a complete idiot and I never really understood it as like I guess they just decided to make him an idiot I didn't realize that was the real joke of it. portrayal really and they've been talking about it since he was like little like I can't remember what great he'll say whatever grade it was but uh yeah since he was young they've been basically telling him he's the dumb one and even if he does well like it doesn't matter because the media is gonna say he's a dumb one he's a drug addict blah 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 blah. would you say it is the machine that forces that upon the spare um, um no because like, they have to constantly as, promote the first in line i don't i don't think so i think it's the what it sounded like to me was that it was we'll say not from the royal houses, not from the royal palace press people, but just the media on the outside thinking like, well, this will be fun. Like, just make it, like, he's a spare anyway. Just make him the stupid, like, and like, you can't make William the dumb one, really. <laughs> no, you have to, no, but that's why I'm saying this is this, you know, again, it is put this one down. So this one, right. 
So everybody goes, he, he needs to be the king, you know? Yeah. And that's why I do believe there is truth that when Harry and Meghan came back from their tour in Africa, right after they were married, they were told, sit down, shut up, stay behind closed doors, that they were, they were too popular. They were right. too popular. People were, you know, um, loving them too much and they did not want that. They needed to put Kate and Will, if not Charles and Camilla out front right, first, right. you know? Mm -hmm. um, right. Yeah. So, so that's, yeah. So it's, um, yeah, very, very interesting. It's like, think about, I don't know, like being a normal kid and dealing with maybe like kids in school saying you're stupid. <laughs> like how that makes you feel what if yeah. the whole world is saying it you're like but I'm not but I'm <laughs> no. not wow yeah, yeah. and oh. and having to fight against that so I can see where he's pushing pushing but I mean when you and I'm gonna say and you and I both know that the crown is not authoritative um but where we've seen where the the spare and you had Margaret who really she you know she and, oh, yeah. and you said that Margaret wanted to be queen. <laughs> Margaret wanted yeah, that. Yeah. Like, yeah, they tried wow. to switch. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then um, I think if you continue to go down um, the lines like that, I think you'd probably see a number of those things. I mean, yeah. but then, well, except for, and I guess that's not necessarily true. Then you had where Edward and um, Albert, where, you know, Edward yeah. uh, abdicated he didn't want it right and, but neither did albert i mean he desperately did not want that um no. but yeah so it's, i think there's a, a a dynamic but i think what a lot of people forget is they're still humans and you know we we we're, we're stupid people we're a stupid well, species we do things, yeah you know and well, we need to yeah that's we're we're humans and literally everybody has different personalities or different types of way they handle things right so like just because everyone else in the family has been able to like keep it together. I mean, minus the uncle who abdicated the throne. Right, right. <laughs> but, but um, you know, it's like, yeah, it just, so like, yeah, just like, I'm like, Harry's growing up, like, I'm sorry, I get it. This is a thing. I'm sorry. It's not for me. Like, you know, I, so yes, it has turned into like a disaster of an exit, but also, he did I mean he also does say that it wasn't like he wanted to leave like they would have been happy working as royals as well yeah because they, I mean that's basically what they want to be doing anyway as far as like charitable you know right business. right yeah yeah um <coughs> and I don't mean this to sound anti-Megan okay but okay. <laughs> I mean but seriously but no seriously um I'm not sure that she had the personality to come in and play second fiddle. Right. I, I think that rubbed her the wrong way. I think there was a hope, and even by the public too, a hope yeah. that they would, you know, because it had always been the threesome. So if Harry had always been there, right. why not? Why not? Why can't they all be friends? besties? <laughs> but um, but it started being a, no, we need to promote these and put these down. And I don't think Megan had a personality for that. Um, not yeah. from the start. I mean, that's not who she is. She, mm -hmm. when I say Hollywood, Hollywood actress, that sounds pejorative and I don't mean for it to sound that way, but it takes a personality to want right. to be out there in front of people. And she always said, I don't want to be the lady that, you know, the lady that lunches. I want to be the woman that works. Right. Um, right. And she wanted to be out there and be proactive and she wanted to be a voice. Um, yeah. So for her to have to come into this right. and be told you can't be a voice, never explain, never complain, we'll probably right. reverse that. And she um, also gave up her career. So it's like, okay, so you don't have your career, so you don't have that, but also we don't want you to like fully work here yet. <laughs> yeah. And we're only going to give you a microphone at certain times and we're only going to let you say certain things. Exactly. Yeah. For a woman who is politically opinionated and likes yeah. to put that out there, now she has to take it down. So yeah. I don't think she had the personality to go into it. And that's that's not necessarily, I'm not saying that is a bad thing. I'm not saying yeah. it's a good thing. I'm just saying that's what it was. That is the, I, think, I think you're right. Yeah, that, and I think also just that she has an American mindset too. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll say like a strong independent female American mindset. So like none of that was going 
to really fit in and work yeah. with that yeah. because someone was talking, I was talking to somebody and they were, I forget who, but they were talking about how Harry and like his book and everything are like, it's just so selfish and self-centered and just all about them and blah, blah, blah. And I go, American? <laughs> <laughs> Ugly Americans. Ugly yeah, Americans. it's like they're not thinking about anybody else, how it affects anybody else. They're just doing what they want to do. I was <laughs> like, well, he's in the right place. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Well, I, you know, I, I've said before, he, he didn't like his life. He wanted to go out and do something else. Right. And we're not the world that we were when his grandmother was going up. He should be able to get out and uh, and do his thing. Uh, the rumor is that Beatrice is moving out there. Um, oh, the neighbor. And I said I say rumor, and it could right. be that they just want a California vacation house, something like that. I don't right, know. Right. Um, yeah, he does seem yeah. pretty close with the cousins. Yeah, yeah, yeah they do absolutely. Um, so is Harry going back for the coronation? Coronation's coming up in May. Got yeah. a couple months here. I don't, yeah, here. I don't know, but I just know that either way, like basically, like Trevor and I were saying, how it's like, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because oh gosh, that's what my neighbor said. Yeah, yes. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I go, it was like it's like the queen's funeral all over again basically yeah. and it i was is. like except this is a happy occasion yeah. i was like because everyone's like if, are they gonna come they'll upstage the funeral but if they don't come then everyone's gonna be like oh my god they didn't come to the funeral <laughs> right so i heard I, I read one headline again what's true what isn't um right. that yeah what are they, they saying been invited but they've been told that they have to sit in the back sit down show they're not allowed to talk so um or give interviews or say anything right. Oh, okay. I, wonder, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's true or not. It sounds like it could be true. Um, yeah, yeah. I know a parent's love. I know Charles loves Harry. I know yeah. he would love to have him there. Probably would love to see his grandchildren. Yeah. Um, all that. Um, but if this is a political show, well, it's not even political because they're supposed to be apolitical. But if this is supposed to be whatever show that it needs to be, right. um, I think... And again, it's my lowly opinion, who am I? Um, I think it would be a good thing for the palace to publicly invite, or at least let it be known, to right. invite Harry and Meghan. Yes. And Harry and Meghan should decline. Thank okay. you, you can't make it. This is not a good time for us, something like that. That okay. way it doesn't look so, you know, um, right. and this nastiness. Um, yeah, because if they're there, the only headlines, it doesn't matter how much they keep their mouths shut. It's going to yeah. be, oh, Harry and Megan were invited, but they weren't on the balcony. Harry, right, right. They look, at the, look at the looks that were not given with right, right. Right. They were, it, That's all it's ever going to turn into. That's a fair point. What if it's like, what if just Harry comes on his own? And yeah. Gets, I mean, and sits on, I mean, whatever. Like, I don't know where they put him, but. Don't it's you just like, want to pull them less, all in a room with a therapist and go, let's just get this out. Right? Yeah, it was like, it's, exactly. I'm like, it's because <laughs> they're less threatening when they're individual, Megan and Harry. Like, I'm not yeah. saying Megan's the bad one. I'm saying just when they are on their own doing their own thing, they're less threatening to yeah. like everyone yeah. else because they're like this power couple that yeah. <laughs> like yeah. storms everything. So I want to say a couple of things that I've noticed too, since Elizabeth's been gone, and I may have brought this up too, but I want to go back to that bum pat that, um, that Kate gave, um, a couple of things. First of all, her wardrobe that she does wear pantsuits to engagements that did not happen when, uh, when, when Queen Elizabeth was alive, because Queen Elizabeth, like, I think you have like two pictures of her entire lifespan of her in pants and they were usually right. jobbers for writing. So, um, but with uh, with Kate, I think she's, you know, she's painting her nails and she's, you yeah. know, wearing the high heels and she's, and she should, for God's right? sake, yeah, she's not 1945, you know, this is, right. you know, she needs to be a person of the people. But I also think, and I think this is sort of twofold. I think there's a little more affection being shown. And I think some of it is retaliation against the headlines that came about at the funeral, how Harry and Meghan were holding hands. And right. oh, we I was going to show, I was oh, going to show the with the gloves. Yeah. <laughs> See, 
I don't know. I love black and white together. I would have liked those gloves had there been think, more black in the dress, like a black design or something. I the length of the gloves is off. It might work if they didn't go up as right? a, Maybe like, yeah, you know, if, were, like, mean, if they were if elbow, elbow gloves. Elbow, yeah, because yeah, I was picturing elbow gloves when you talked about it, and then I was like, "What is this?" They're like, so yeah. long. right." It's very, it's a very Grace uh, Grace Kelly. If I say Edith Head, she was the yeah. premier um, fashion design, movie uh, costume designer yeah. back in the day, and that was oh, yeah. very Grace Kelly. And I do love that, but I just don't like the it gloves really, with it. Well, um, it, it just like takes away from the dress. Like you it know, does the dress because it's just really head cute. Gloves. Thank you. So it's not just me, but it also does remind me a bit of Diana. When Diana, do you remember there were pictures of Diana? She had, um, I think it was a purple and a red gown and she wore one purple glove and one red glove. And um, maybe it was black. No, maybe it was black and red. Oh, and yeah? She wore, yeah, she wore red, one red satin glove and one black glove oh, I know. to go with her ensemble. And, um, you know, sort of whimsical, but yeah. I, I know that was out there. Um, yeah, you're going to look for it, see if you can find it. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, but uh, what was I going to say? Um, she wore a beautiful ensemble yesterday. They did something and she had, you know, I, I love her coats more than anything, but she did have on a white, like a sweater and a black and white houndstooth skirt that went past the knee. And she and um, Wills did a, um, like a stationary bicycle contest. And apparently oh. she fed him or something like that was the headline. Um, Anyway, I, I do think that she is, I, I think there's going to be a little bit more affection. And, and who doesn't want to see that? Oh, who doesn't yeah. want to see that, they're, that the, you know, the people of their country, even here in the States, we like to see that our president and, you know, that they're family people. You find a picture. Yep. See? That's funny. I don't know why it reminds me of that, but it does. I, I was like, I don't. I don't hate it, but I'm, that's funny because it's like of all of her, you know, like iconic outfits, like I've never, this one's never been pointed out to me before. I'm like, yeah, I do remember awesome. that because, yeah, I and, remember that. Yeah. And she, there was another one. She wore the necklace down the back, which is what they used to do in the twenties anyway. Yeah. Like, right. Think, you know, little fashion things that's that, she, cool. that she made, but um, yeah. Right. Well, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I, I love though when the press says that, um, oh, you know, like, seven times that Kate Middleton um, mimicked Diana's fashion sense or something like that. And it's like, okay, Diana wore a polka dot dress, Kate wore, but what, is nobody allowed to wear a polka dot dress? Without right, being right, yeah, Diana? it's because <laughs> Diana wore, for, yeah, yeah. If, did anybody wear polka dots before Diana? Yes, yeah, Lucille Ball did. I bet Margaret did. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, That's a good goodness. point. Well, I think I heard, let's see, where did I hear this? I feel like maybe even you told me, was it that, they're no longer going to officially announce what design right. Right. that was you told me that yeah, yeah. So that, that would not be the focus they're right. still going to comment on what she wore but I think they're just not going to give the labels anymore right um, right which yeah. I think that's yeah I like that that it's like hey guys we're here for this or whatever like yeah we have to dress up for it <laughs> but, well and because who is the monarch? Who is the bloodline monarch? It's Will. Does anybody ever say, he's wearing a velvet tuxedo jacket today by the, you know? Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, it yeah, just it doesn't ever is. come up. It's always about the woman. Of course, we're always more interested in the woman's fashion. We're, we're more- Yeah, well, they've more. got more interesting fashion. The guys, it's like, what kind of suit are you wearing? Because <laughs> it looks like the one you wore the last seven engagements. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Is that a new tuxedo? Because it looks like the same one you've been wearing for the last 10 years. Like, no. yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah. no, I swear this is a repeat this is brand new <laughs> like, oh, all right <laughs> so let me ask you what tea were you drinking this morning or are you no, drinking? i was yeah i am i was drinking the uh white chai but i think i oversteeped it a little so it's oh, been a little bit well it's because i put it in my little teapot with the one thing and i never yes. took the thing out yes because usually it gets like low enough that it's not steeping anymore right <laughs> so yes yeah yeah <laughs> But so now yeah, the bottom part yeah. is like, oh, the sugar's not cutting it. <laughs> so my friend from London, I told you she sent me three kinds of tea from Harrods and one of yeah. them is Assam, which was great because I've started drinking a lot of Assam. It's just a really, I, I call it a really stout tea. It's just a good traditional solid black tea. Yeah. Um, so she sent me those and she sent me, I sent you pictures of these. This is lovely. Um, and she really surprised me with that. I wasn't expecting it, but um, oh an gosh. official program from the Jubilee. 
That's awesome. And yeah, it was, it's really neat. So again, it's a program. So none of the pictures are from the Jubilee. This is a program for right. the Jubilee that was right, right. in the um, Beautiful things in here. Let's see if there's anything I can find. Um, never really did care for her wedding dress. Um, <laughs> right, yeah, I know. Did. She was saggy in the boobs. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, was it Eugenie who wore it again? Was it Eugenie or Beatrice, one of them, and they had it fitted, and it looks so oh, much. Oh, really? Funny. Oh, okay, that's yeah. funny. Um, they have beautiful things. I love this. Just, just lovely. Oh yeah, that is. I beautiful. think we forget just how you know beautiful she was. Right, right. Yeah, I know. Well, I think uh, wasn't she the one that was like uh, saved up like fabric, whatever ration things or whatever, because like during the war, so like she had to say she saved up the coupons or whatever, like to uh -huh. have the fabric for the dress because she didn't want it to be like she was special. Is that right? That's awesome. I love yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I love that. This yeah. one's very <laughs> traditional. Oh. That's awesome. I wonder how long, I wonder how long her face will still be the face of England. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, yeah, the right. Of Charles. It's just not Charles. Mm -mm. And I don't know if he'll be in rain long enough for it really ever to right. be. We'll so. see. Well, I'm excited because, so I'm going there in like two weeks. That's right. Oh my gosh. I was going to ask you that too. And I want to tell you about my suffragette tea coming up, but please do. Okay, when yeah. you so, um, so I'm going, yeah, there in two weeks, staying with Claire, uh, but I'm excited because it's the, before the coronation, but I'm like, all oh, the merch is going to be out. <laughs> so oh I'm gosh. Gonna, oh man. I'm so I'm just going to get like all the souvenir stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah so so that'll be cool um but uh yeah honestly so I think Claire told me what she's got planned because she's working a lot of it um which is fine because I'm I, sorry you, she's working a lot of what a oh, lot of the time that you're she's there working a lot while I'm there she's oh I have the coronation <laughs> like Amy's got ties and she hasn't shared them with me what is this okay all right taking a breather it's hilarious uh so yeah so uh let's see so we get to go to a friend's house on the friday that i'm there which are people that i got to hang out with on our new year's trip last time so right. it'll be like a little reunion and then on saturday it's the final day of the rugby six nations tournament which is playing in and so her uh her boyfriend has booked a table in the pub for the whole afternoon to watch with his friends and she, she said it should be a fun atmosphere so i'll get it i'm gonna see that and then she said the 19th uh is their mother's day and so she said we could go back to reading where she's from and see her mom which i stayed with them the very first time in 2000 so like i know her her mom says like yeah let's do that <laughs> well, that's 23 years ago Whew. can you right? <laughs> Can you see yeah. right that's why i tell everyone i was like this was a safe tattoo to get like yeah <laughs> like right? 20 years from counting <laughs> Gosh. but okay suffragette tea because i don't know are, are, are you having tea anywhere or are you gonna go oh oh so yeah so basically i am i have decided that i want it to be like just a me week where i live in london <laughs> so i'm just gonna like pop around and do whatever i want <laughs> so i might oh, get like ladies I mean, and gentlemen definitely... my blouse is not the only thing that's green right now just say it <laughs> so i'm definitely gonna do go see my tower bridge because that's my beloved okay. um okay. but i might go through the tower of london it might be uh fun again plus i don't know in the last four years, I've watched plenty more shows where like things will click even more when right. I'm like, yes, 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 tours yes. and stuff. Yeah. So I've heard the virtual war rooms are amazing. Everybody says they were fascinating. So if Jose and I get Maybe there the summer, that. like we hope, I, that's the one thing I, I think I'd like to take him to because A, I haven't seen it. And he, I think that's something that would draw him in. He's like, I really yeah, don't yeah. care if I ever see a palace or go drink tea. And I'm right, like, right. bite your tongue. But um, right. yeah. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, so I think I'll just pop around to probably like popular destinations, but mostly just feel like I'm living there again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Have you ever done like the Thames Riverboat tour or anything like that? Or good question. Uh, 
knows? Maybe I should do that. Yeah. I, just, I love this. If it's a good day, I just would love to, you know, see, see the city from that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. Cause I've been up in the eye a few times and it'd be nice to just like go on the Tim's and I don't know, have them tell me whatever I'm looking at. Right. <laughs> you could go down the strand and you could go to the Twinings tea store. Who did I read was in the Twinings tea store? Like it was somebody ancient. Oh gosh, what was I just reading? And that certain individuals had been in there. And I was like, wow. And I've stepped in there before. I did buy, in yeah. fact, that tea tin that I gave you, the Elizabeth yeah. 90th. That was, oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. So um, if you, and they do tea tastings. So oh, okay. um, something else to do. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll definitely have tea somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> You can get on the damn street corner, honey. I mean, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know, that's why I'm like, oh, it's like pop around. <laughs> Milk and sugar, please. Milk and sugar, please. Oh my gosh, yeah. that is so exciting. I'm so excited for you. I am just- Thank you. God, Thank I you. hope you're posting pictures every day because I'm going to wake up every morning and go, where is she? Where is she? Doing? I know. Well, since I'm going to be on my own and doing my own thing, there's a strong chance that I will feel like posting on social media <laughs> because I'm so horrible at doing it. Because I'm always like busy or with someone else, I'm like, nah, whatever. <laughs> we can do video shots of you somewhere. Right, right. Yeah, that's okay. Stuff. Yeah, I'll just like, yeah, I'll tour around and make uh, Facebook be my tour. <laughs> right. So, my friend who's there, she called me this week because she was actually in Jacksonville, Florida today, or not today, yeah. this week. She was touring colleges with her youngest son, mm -hmm. um, looking at Jacksonville University, which is Jose's and my alma mater. Um, oh. And this was so, this was the other book that she, sent me the, um, oh, nice. the oh, Buckingham right. Palace royalties and uh, nice. beautiful stuff. I have, good Lord, I have so many um, tea recipe books. Right. I, <laughs> I will never get through them. Um, great stuff. And she sent me all those Herod's teas and things like that. Um, so she, I'm saying, you know, our conundrum as, as we get older, this is for, Ho for Jose and me, we, you know, finding care for Jackie, who is very independent, um, mm -hmm. But one of the reasons that we talk about moving to Florida is because we would have that pool of, hopefully, we assume we would have that pool of family who would be willing to take Jackie on for a week right. or so, so that Jose and I can sometimes travel alone. Yeah. Um, so when I mentioned to her, I said, we were talking about flying into Dublin first and then coming down to London so that by the time we can stay with them, we're already acclimated and, you know, oh, right. jet lag for the most part. And she was very sweet. She said, "Bring do it the opposite. Come to London. Leave Jackie with us for a week." And um, and she she's one of she's a special education teacher, so oh she she would love it. They never had daughters, and they're so great with her. Um, and I said, "Yeah, but Jose and I just want to be grown ups. You know, we we don't we, we don't want to be mom and dad for you know for just okay. a few days anyway." Um, but she said, "Well, whatever you want to do." She says, "I just could have killed her." She says. You know, she said, we have plenty of room. They've given us a five bedroom house. It's huge. And it's just the two of us rattling around in it with Owen. And I'm just like, okay, okay. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I tell him this and he goes, he just looked at me and goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, goes, I know that's what you wanted me to do. I know you wish that was you. And I'm like, I'm not going to lie. I'm like, she, and she's not working right now. So her days are filled with, Hmm. Let me walk out the door and go to this park and go oh see gosh. this historic home. If she and gets to do what I'm going to do for like a week. She gets to I do know. just all the I time. Know. I'm trying so hard to feel like you people and not hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so jealous, but and so incredibly happy for you because that is exactly what I would do. Um, that in a photography tour, I don't know if you've ever heard of those, where you can actually take photography tours where they take you to specific places um oh, cool. to take you know at, at specific time of days which is always sunset and sunrise right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pictures, I would love to do that um so anyway so I don't know how much time you have because I feel yeah, like I, say, I can do till 11 so tell me your suffragette okay yeah only a few more minutes I could talk to you all day um <laughs> I know so yeah so, <laughs> <I> my <can laughs> friend, <laughs> so my friend Amy another Amy lives down the street she works for the suffragette museum and I have to give background that um the suffragettes that protested here in Washington, D.C. at the White House um, when they were considered belligerent or, you know, uh, pushing boundaries, they were arrested. Um, about 15 minutes down the street is um, what we have, uh, two different things. One of them is the Occoquan River. And next to the Occoquan River was a separate facility, a prison um, for the suffragettes, for women 
uh, because you wouldn't have put women and men together exactly. in the same prison back then. Um, so unfortunately that building has been torn down, but just two minutes away from that, um, closer to us is what is called, it's referred to now as the Lorton prison. Um, it was originally a workhouse for men, um, not murderers, not people doing huge crimes, but needing rehabilitation. So they would teach them crafts and trades. And, um, and when you look at the building, it's beautiful. It's brick and with these arches yeah. and it almost looks like a college campus. Anyway, they have installed a suffragette museum in honor of the suffragettes. And um, further down into the park, um, they've actually inside this beautiful these statues and a huge memorial to the suffragettes and um, gives a timeline for the ratification votes for women. Yeah. So um, I was asked to do this. And I, as I was honest with you before, I was pulling back. I was not going to do this yeah, anymore. Right. Um, we have a lot on our plate getting ready to retire and make some grand life decisions here. Right. And, um, but this came across my plate. I'm like, doggone, this sounds so cool. I would love to do yeah. this because the suffragette movement started in the parlors of women. Even here in the United States, they were having tea. That's when they would get together. They would yeah. talk about this over tea and air their grievances and start, oh, well, we need to talk to this senator. Well, I know this person. And this is how the movement started and boiled up, if you will. Um, so they wanted me to come in to do this. It's for 30 people, which really pushes me. And I can't tell you the number of times it's like, dear God, I need Amy to come up here and help me with this tea party. Oh, no. yeah, to yeah. do one person, three people, you know, for one person to do 30 people, Oh yeah, I've been able to pick people each, serving, talking. Mostly, they want my talking points of traditions of um, tea, right. um, how afternoon tea came about, how important it was. I'm um, coming up with new talking points that um, that involve the suffragette movement right. and um, what tea was like um, in the states and um, and in England around that time. Um, but at the last minute, well, I'm going to say last minute, they wanted to start advertising for it today. And last Friday, I went to the museum. She said, come down and see the facility. So they were going to be doing this in an art gallery. And she said, so I need to see your LLC. You need to be insured for up to a million dollars for this one-time event. And I need to see your food handler certificate. And I just was like, um, I never got an LLC. And she says, you can purchase one for the day which I was not easy about doing. Yeah, one time up to a million dollars, it was going to cost me $63, which is nothing. Yeah, yeah. But it was like, I really needed to look into the legalities and, and was being put on, you know, on the burner to yeah, get Yeah, right, yeah, you were not expected. And, and my particular business, I was a, uh, considered a guest caterer. Where I would go into people's homes or their um, uh, like clubhouses and things like that. I would make the food on premises, except for the baked goods. I said, right. so I never really needed to have any particular type of license to do that. Um, so I went home and I thought about it. I'm like, I, I was not sleeping. I was got all these butterflies in my stomach. I'm like, I don't see how I'm supposed to do this. Instead of pulling back, I called her the next day. I said, instead of being able to pull back, I now need to go full throttle in a matter of four days. And I'm not prepared to do that. I'm also not comfortable doing it. So I don't want to pull back on you since we'd already made so many plans. And she said, I already have something else in mind. So they, they were going to get a caterer for sandwiches, but now she's running around getting the baked goods and asking me, where can I get scones? Where can I get cookies? And I'm like, this is all the stuff I was going to do for you. Why do you, you know... But she said, but we want you just to come in. We want you to brew and serve the tea. And I'm like, damn good decision. Damn yeah, good yeah, decision. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she said, if you can do the tea and we want you to do the talking points, you have an hour to do tea, to run my game with my talking points, give people an education, whatever. And then they will get a tour of the museum afterwards. And I don't have to bake or make anything other That's than- That's awesome. Tea. It is awesome. I gave okay. them my price. They mm -hmm. want my cups my saucers, my like, yeah, yeah. all the equipment that comes with it. So it is still my preparing, setting up, taking right. away, watch it's all, it's still all that time. And I put a price out there and I was like, I don't know if they're going to go for this because it doesn't include the food, but she right. said, okay, I'm drawing, drawing up the contract right now. It's like, that's awesome. And, well, yeah. So, and if this goes well, then they hope to pull me back possibly around mother's day they want me for the ratification anniversary, which is August 19th. And I think we are going to be out of town, mm -hmm. out of the country at that point, which is gotcha. so unfortunate because that's when they really should be doing this event. Right. So, right. Anyway, well, so, 
but that's awesome. I'll, yeah, I was gonna say, I definitely enjoy being a tea, con tea party consultant yes. more than doing Absolutely. It. So I'm definitely, yeah, like, well, and like renting out my china or whatever, but yeah, so yes. that's awesome that you, they want you for basically the parts that you enjoy and like almost easy part. I mean, you know, it's like the dishes aren't like easy necessarily, but no, no, <laughs> they're not in 30. So but you're not um, messing with food and preparation, you know, all that stuff. That was always his most stressful part. I mean, admit it, the sandwiches, right? Stressed you out the most. Yes. The oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, and I know you've got all those cookies. You should still offer, offer them to you. I did. Like, I did. I did. She doesn't you know, want it. It's up. And I'm like, this is what I could have done. And they're baked good. So what? And she said, she said, I fully appreciate that. The unfortunate part is they want to go to a store up here called Wegmans and they want to get the Wegmans scones. They're about this big. Okay. You can see that mm -hmm. they're about that thick and they're like really soft sugar cookies is what they're more like. They're not really scones. And I said, part of my talking points is, you know, in, in the game is, you know, how do you prepare right. a scone? And um, I said, so I think I'm going to be making scones anyway. I said, if I can have a table next to me that has a teapot and, and the right. scones, I said, when I finish, I said, I will send you home, Katie, with the scones, because you kept saying how much you wanted a traditional scone. And I said, right. so I will make them and you can have them. And she said, that's fine. We can just put them out for display. She said, but we can't take a chance if somebody were to come back and say, I wasn't feeling well and blah, blah, blah. Right, right, right. So I'm telling her, go to wait, you know, you can have but, a market, you get this, you go to Costco, yeah, like, you get these and, and yeah. But yeah, wait, I'm guessing it's like a Publix or something, Wegmans, is it like- It a is, if you guys, if you ever get one down there, but it's it's more than Publix. Now Publix is great and I love their sandwiches right. and their customer service. But Wegmans has a sushi bar and they, oh, okay. I mean, it is massive. It, it is well, huge. Yeah, Publix and they have a cafe. Has, What's that? Right. Oh, Publix has scones. I don't know if you've ever had them, but they sound almost the exact same as what you're describing. And so, yeah, whenever people get them, I'm like, if I'm consulting, I'm like, well, who are you serving? And it's like, depending on who it is, like, they won't care. That's fine. I'm like, don't yeah. stress yourself yeah. out. Exactly. Like, I was, I was, I was, I was, even say, if but you yeah, have if you're going to be talking about real scones, you're like, so those aren't them. <laughs> I know. And I don't want to insult the people that are putting this together, but right. I'm there to talk about what a real tea party is supposed to be like. And right. so right. I'm disappointed that, and I have to say, and I know you need to go, yeah. we were watching, um, food network. Um, is it Mark? I can't remember what his first name is Mark Zimmer. And he goes around the world in exotic yeah. places um but there and I don't even think it was exotic I want to say it was somewhere here in the states is it called an Iowa scone a something mm -hmm. scone and it's like flatbread it's like this big and it's almost like fried bread and they call it scone but he was explaining you know that in scones we think of you know a traditional European right. English he said but scone is just be, kind of taken on in a lot of places just like a, a bread a bread like oh scone. okay oh like that's that. funny but I'm watching that and I was like, hold on a second. Everybody's saying, like, hold on a second. Turn up the flight. Right, right. You call that a what? <laughs> That's crazy. Like, very protective. Right, right. And it's not a scone, it's a scone. <laughs> <laughs> so Amy, I can talk to you all day long. It's been so long. And I'm highly caffeinated. I'm about to bounce off the damn walls right now. <laughs> and go get some stuff done. <laughs> Seriously, like, I have to go write up descriptions of the tea that we're going to be serving. So oh, um, there you go. Well, that yeah. works. Yes, yeah. this has been wonderful and <laughs> worked out beautifully. So thanks for doing a morning tea. Absolutely. And I now am going to yeah transition to putting on my legal assistant hat. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I just want to say again, you look lovely. Your colors, your pink. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you. You're blonde and everything. You look. You thank look like so with my elegant. virtual background. I might not be able to tell. I saw them. They're beautiful. Lovely. Did you see my my peacock feathers? Oh, those are pretty. I like it. It's a bird kind of day. <laughs> it is. It's very chirp, chirp. Yes, very much so. So I'd like to try to get together with you again after your trip. Oh, I will sure. do my best to keep my mouth shut and just listen to everything you have to say. Because oh my gosh. I and, and, and I want screen shares. I want pictures. That's what I, I want to see. You know, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Okay. Yeah, great okay. thing. Well, I would we'll love it. And uh, yeah, and we'll see. One of these months, I'm gonna send you some of my tea from Harrods. Okay, please do. I can send you back, but mine are like it's a psalm and a couple of other black teas. I'm happy to share. I also have some. Oh, doggone! I was gonna bring those. 
I, I found some cheese um, at uh, our Tuesday morning is closing. And so oh, I found, okay. some cheese, so I'll send you some samples of those too. They're yeah, in yeah. Okay. a little triangle union jack box. Um, Ooh, yeah, cute. Thank you. Awesome. Well, and also I realized I am going there in two weeks, so I clearly might pick up some new tea. <laughs> yeah, see, see what you get. There I might be tea to share that I don't even have yet. <laughs> I, <laughs> well, I would love it. You know, I would. I just, oh, I keep wondering if I want to try to get a coronation cup or not, but that's another hundred bucks. I don't know that I want to spend. Yeah. Just wait so. and see what souvenirs come back. <laughs> well, you have, I know, but then you have to, no. I, yeah, we'll see. I'm, well, I'm just saying, yeah, you'll, we'll see, see what kind of coronation souvenirs come your way, and then you can decide if you're so sweet, you're so sweet, <laughs> anything, just send me pictures, you know, if you think, I know, I know you'll be, you know, I will be with you in spirit more than you know, the whole yes. time that you're there, <laughs> uh, like I said, I, I'll, I'll be looking to see if you post anything, um, yes, I'll be, I will really, really put, yeah, I will have the intention of checking in daily, if not multiple times a day. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. So jealous. So happy for you. So you. bon voyage. Have a wonderful time. You gotta Thank have you. a good time. Have fun. Have fun here at Disney. Yeah, I, I know. In the heat. I wish you a fun. <laughs> what heat? Come on. <laughs> I'm like looking. I'm like, what is it? Like eighty? <laughs> it's gonna be close to 90 when we're there at the park it's gonna be like, ah. okay that's hot and disney <laughs> thank you and the humidity we're not used to that's anyway true. it's only 78 right now but the high is 85 nice nice it's like 53 here so but the sun is shining so it feels warm that's great yeah i see i'm looking at the yeah well at least Knock on wood, at least you don't, there's not rain in the forecast. So. No, there isn't, which is grand. That's good. Uh, although I would have gone anyway, because we've already got the tickets, the reservation. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, it's like, so go, but, yeah, but it's like, do you want to be uh, wet and muggy or do you want to just no, be hot and sweaty? I can't stand being wet, <laughs> but I'll be, I'll be wet from the sweat. So, well, so, so yeah, sweat, yeah. On that <laughs> elegant note. <laughs> okay. 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 Oh, well, this is wonderful. So I will see you next time. That so, sounds great. Talk to you later. Bye to our door in public. <laughs> Thanks, bye. All right. Bye, guys.